Go click on OBS for a sec. I thought you hit the record button too, but mm. it won't do both, I don't think, anyways. We'll go in three, and a two, and a one. And welcome, welcome to Between Two Jerseys. It's a name we've been thinking for a while. We're going to test it out because there's two jerseys. But anyways, we're still going to keep the episode count going because we've came this far. It's, That's episode... a rebrand. it's just a rebrand, like the Halifax Hurricanes or the Moncton Magic. Exactly. Or the Riptides, sorry. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, and <clears throat> it's episode 79. It's Thursday, April 13th. Let us know how the sound quality is because we're very we're interested in knowing. Um, I'm your host, creator Ethan Ziltner. I got my co-host, NBL Insider. From MBL Cena, Jake Beckett, how are you? Good, yourself? I'm good, fella. We're just going to go over some of the playoff games in a sec here. But there's also some league news we're going to go over. Do you want to you break some of this league news we're gonna, we've are gonna we got to cover involving some players leaving, some players upset? Yeah. Well, we'll get into some transactions first. Uh, a lot of people already know this. I don't know if I'm necessarily breaking anything. But the Island Storm have decided to let go Devon Maxwell. Um, they did not disclose any reasons. I know Maxwell was on social media afterwards uh, expressing his side of the story. Um, I don't want to call either sides liars. There's truth in both sides. But at the end of the day, I think it's there's Devon's side of the story, there's the Island Storm side of the story, and then there's what actually happened. Um, not saying either team are lying about what happened. I imagine they have both their own takes on the situation. Uh, we've had Devon on the show before. Great guy. Um, I can't see it being anything against his character and you hope not yeah yeah um also at the same time duncan shaw the island storm they're a well-run organization they're not gonna throw players under the bus or do something um if they know it's wrong uh so that being said best of luck to devon hopefully we get him back on this the the show hopefully we get him back in this league uh probably not with the island storm but he's <laughs> defensive just one just one defensive player of the year so he has talent that this league will want to have use. again. So, and it's not—it's not only that he comes in; he's just the defensive stopper, kind of like a Marcus Capers. He scored 18 points a game, seven rebounds a game, and, and he led the league in blocks this year. So he can do a little bit of all of it. And when he when he turns it on, I don't think I've ever seen anybody play defense on Ryan Anderson the way he did that one game we were at. So. That was impressive. When we were sitting courtside, we got to see it firsthand it was one of the first things you said you're like wow he yeah. is not scored because in the first quarter uh yeah, ryan like anderson 17 17 points on like f- five of five threes yeah four or five threes yeah yeah there was a lot of threes going up and even me and you're going what the hell like yeah. who's guarding him god damn and then all of a sudden <laughs> got locked yeah. up anyways um first off before we keep going we'd like to also talk about why we're wearing jerseys jake yes why are we wearing jerseys? Um, I'm going to butcher the name, but Humboldt? That's why I got you to do it. Doing it for Humboldt. An unfortunate incident that happened yes, there. Yes, very. And, yeah, it's just very sad. Mm-hmm. Anywho, some more un- unfortunate news for the River Lions. We'll get to the lightning news. In a while. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes, we will. But anyway, Sam Muldrow has left for... NBL Australia. No, games. not the NBL. They're state league because the NBL Australia just uh Well it's finished, so this is like yeah. the development time league. Yeah, isn't so it's it? their essentially it's their state league, it's called. It's state just called league. the Australian State League game. Congratulations to the Melbourne t- United on winning uh their technically it's their first um their first championship as the United. The Melbourne Tigers, I think it used to be. They've had I was a just couple, gonna say was it was the Tigers. Yeah, yeah, they have a couple champ a few championships already, but this is the just first a rebrand United, as well. So yeah. <laughs> essentially. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So And actually you know what? I thought it was gonna I thought it was gonna be like for the River Lions, I thought with the loss of Muldrow, it's like, oh well, there's the sweep for London. But they I don't know what Joe Rasso did or what he said, but he came out and he he got his guys to get a win at home, so well, even without their best defensive player. Yeah, and I thought it was going to be a big blow not having Sam Muldrow there, arguably defensive player mm-hmm. of the year. Um, it's just sometimes you got to move on, and for him and Devon Maxwell, here this here is the way I look at it. You could tell me your perspective, Jake, and if the fans want to as well, they can chime in. The way I look at it is like this: I see that they have an opportunity to go play. 
in another league mm-hmm. that is more established. Not saying it's better, but it's just more established. And being able, and you're, and if you're Sam Muldrow in his situation, to go and play in the state league and then have the ability to go play and earn a roster spot on an official NBL Australia team, they pay more money. Mm-hmm. So let's respect the man in trying to earn some more money. Let's just That's the way I look at it. I don't know about you, Jake. No, I agree too. Um, because in all honesty, in all honesty, not that they ever would, but Niagara could just drop them in the middle of the playoffs. So if a player drops their team in the middle of the playoffs, that's exactly what, what I would like to talk about for a second here, Jake. What was some of the things that kind of make you make me? It made me scratch my head. I don't know about you, but some of the way the contracts are structured. I know we've talked about this before on the show when Elvin was here and stuff like that, but we. I'm just curious, I'm curious again, sorry, as to how it could work. So there's no guaranteed money at all? Um, no. Uh, everybody signs a one-year contract, essentially. But that contract can be null and void at any time because a player can leave at any time. So both the team and the players can decide to essentially drop the other person um, if something comes up because players can find more money. Yeah. Player, do you want me to keep talking? Hey. Players can find more money. Um, in a different league and just take that if they want. An example, Mike Bell with the Island Storm up and left uh, f- five games into his season here uh, for Mexico, I believe, or Kevin Rogers in KW. Yeah, well, it, it's, Bodiford. there's Bodiford, Kevin Rogers, Rogers Modro uh, now. Modro. Maxwell's going down to Mexico. Mike Bell. Oh, no, Modro's going to Australia. But. Well, even another guy um, early with the Storm, a Sean Dixon Tatum. Dixon Tatum, I believe, this seven footer okay. played real well. And then he got a got a call from the G League by this uh, Salt Lake City Stars. Or where, same with yeah. like Duke Mondi, and that's yeah Duke Mondi. So and that's not okay. Now some of you are thinking, well, they're they're kind of poaching our best talent. It does suck that way, but mm-hmm. at the same time, this is where the league needs to take a little more action on social mm-hmm. media and take pride in these guys doing well yeah. and start advertising it like they used to. They used to do that a lot more. I don't know why they don't. Yeah, because if you look at it now, and a lot of fans know this already, Amari Johnson was here for the first two seasons with the Oshawa Power and then with the Summerside Storm, just signed a multi-year NBA contract. Official with the, first NBL yeah. player to play real minutes. Yeah. Good for him, too. Um, yeah, the first guy to make play regular season minutes I'm gonna uh, go check after quickly. their career. Yeah, I'm going to check, actually. We'll keep talking. I'm going to yeah. see how he did the last game, check when they played the Lakers. Because oh, that, yeah, uh, they played that Ingram night. fell, obviously, you saw him. But anyways... Good for him. Very happy about that. And if anyone, yeah, like I said, the whole there, this league is not going to be getting poached. It, it's a good thing, and I think the one yeah. thing we need to do is do what the league used to do and promote it more and talk about how these guys did a great job and they are doing well as well. Let's see, did he play? Did Actually, you know what we could do while you're looking that up is for future podcasts we could have a an alumni portion. We Dude, just feature an alumni. He played 25 minutes. Yep. He got 13 points. He was 5 of 8 from the field. He had 4 there rebounds, go, so. 4 assists. He... 4 rebounds, 4 assists. 4 rebounds, 4 assists. He had 4 rebounds, 4 assists. That's pretty good for, what, it's third three game? Or five Second three. Game? Yeah, and he had a steal. Well, that's what they need, too. The Grizzlies are horrible shooters. And well, he's got a nice shot for a six foot nine guy, too. It's very smooth. Very, very smooth. Very impressed. Yeah. That's a little bit more. I bet you he wanted that in his favor because the first game he played, he went like 0 for 5, but I'm sure there was a little bit of a... Yeah, and I think the farthest the player has gone before that would have to be Devin Sweeney, former MVP. Uh, Zane Johnson made it on a summer league well, team, but he didn't I think that was before. Pre-season. Wasn't it before he played for the ne- the Knicks summer league team before he came to our league? He won a championship and played, in the summer, played for the Knicks. I remember okay. watching him going, hey, I remember him. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Devin Sweeney played preseason. Minutes, for the yes. for the Nuggets, um, he did well too. He averaged, I think, just over eight points a game, which is solid for a That's guy who was an undrafted rookie, essentially. So, <clears throat> as he looks away, anyway, <laughs> um, anyways, healthy segue there. That was yeah. that wasn't bad. But anyways, we're going to talk about a little frustration because, uh, spoiler alert, the London Lightning did not sweep which I thought they were going to do. David Tingley has mm-hmm. been texting me constantly saying, hashtag no sweeps. <laughs> and I'm like, I hate you so much. But anyways. <sighs> anyways. 
there's been a little frustration after the game three loss for the London Lightning. It wasn't there, Jake. We've got Will Bolden, who had voiced his opinion about Ryan Anderson only playing seven minutes. Ryan Anderson then had went to his Instagram and voiced his displeasure with him posting the amount of points he'd scored in his position in the all-time list mm. at sixth with one of the captions. Now, I'm just trying to figure all this out, Jake. Why don't you help the fans to figure all this out? I'm trying to put a whole um, I'm just understanding g- here. Well, there's two sides to it. Like you said before. There's, there's the player yep. side and then there's the co- – well, there's probably three sides. But there's the player side. We can look at – we'll look at it two ways. We'll look at it as a coach not playing, historically, the best shooter this league has ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, other guys can go on that list. Omar Strong is up there. Quan Still Zimmerman holds record. Quan Zimmerman. Other guys. Real good. This league has had some real good pure shooters. But hands down, Ryan Anderson's been the best shooter this league has ever had. He's been oh yeah, six years. He's got um, the numbers to back it. Exactly. Well, and shout out to Anthony Anderson too. Can't oh well, yeah. <laughs> and Alan Alston. Um, so. That being said, um, he does more than shoot. Uh, as you showed, he played point guard to start the season. Um, he passes. He shoots. He defends. Not too bad either. He could be a little better on the defensive end, but I think he's still a solid passable defensive uh, wing. Um. But going forward, I think uh, you look at it f- from a fan side and a player side. You have a player of this caliber with this resume that's done this, this, and this in this league, and he plays seven minutes in a playoff game where you could sweep your opponent. That's the confusing thing. At first, <clears throat> I thought maybe he was hurt. Maybe, maybe he tweaked an ankle or something. And that's actually and what Keith the original Russell said. No, we're not going to play you. We're just going to whoop, shut you down for the night. You know what I mean? That's what the original Morris Del Costa had reported initially too. That it was Who an is injury. Morris Del Costa. Morris Del Costa is, I want to say award winning because he probably is, but I, I don't think I could find what awards he's won. But uh, he's a very <laughs> well respected sports journalist for the London Free Press here in London. Um, he's ex- he has done an amazing job covering the Lightning and the league uh, since its foundation. Um, and he is the type of guy that's going to report what he hears. So if the, if, the league come, if the team comes out and says Ryan Anderson wasn't feeling good or he wasn't healthy, that's why he only played seven minutes and we shut him down, that's, that's what he's going to report. Given. And I said this in one of the fan pages too, I think he gets a lot of flack uh, because sometimes it'll come out and they're like, well, that wasn't, that's not true. Well, Morris Del Costa is an award-winning writer. He's not going to lie in any of his beat writing. If he if he's told by Keith Vassell or Vito or whoever from the Lightning organization that they shut him down because he's not feeling well, that's the truth that he's been told, and he's going to report that. That's he has what, deadlines to meet too, so I'm exactly. sure he can't it can't just be like, okay, well, I'll I can just let this sit like you and I could do, Jake, and just let it sit and figure out and wait till our podcast to broadcast the whole information. Yeah. He's that's his job. He's got to put out information. So. I have no problem with what he has to go through. I used to, I remember calling him out. Now I don't have that big of a problem with Mo Del Costa because you got to put yourself in this man's shoes and understand what exactly he's going through. Yeah, no, it's um, it's just a matter of he was told one thing, and that's that's what, as a writer, that's what if that's what the team's telling you, that's what you report. He's a reporter, and that's his job. And if he didn't report anything, but well, Morris, don't you know? Well, Morris does know because he was told. Well, he was told what he should know, but so yeah. When you go and talk to the owner, you think you're getting the right information, right? So we'll look at it the other side now. We'll look at. I got. Uh, I pulled up here the last four games for Ryan Anderson. Okay. So A little body of work. April first. Yep. Actually, are we going to go to April first for April sixth, seventh, sure. tenth? April first versus the Island Storm. Yep. His first quarter was phenomenal. That was the game you and I were at. The last game of the regular season. Um, he shot, let me pull up the first quarter stance here. He shot 6 of 11, 5 of 10. Had 17 points in the first quarter. He ended that game. I need a mouse for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> he ended that the game, and I hit the home button. Crap. Here we go. <laughs> he ended that game 8 of 24, 7 of 21 from 3. Oh. With 25 points. That's after they put Devon Maxwell on him. 
So he had a lot of hard. So buckets, without looking at the scoring, oh, he had twenty five points, seven assists, four rebounds, solid night. Yeah, you think it's a pretty good night. Seven of twenty one from the field, of uh, from three, eight yeah. of twenty four from the field. Mm. Only three of his shots came. And from then when within. you look at the breakdown too, you go, oh, he scored all of his points in the first quarter. Yeah. What happened? Um, he went, I think, zero of three, and then zero of five in the second and third, Oof. and then three of five or something in the fourth. Uh, so then we go fast forward to the first game of the playoffs. Uh, April 6th against the Niagara River Lions. He went 7 of 16, 5 of 14, 20 points, 7 assists. So he's distributing the ball. He's, that's not no knock on him. Um, yeah, you know what you're getting there, yeah. And then April 7th against the River Lions, game 2, he went 2 of 11. Oof. 2 of 8 from 3, 5 Oof. of 6 from the free throw line. 11 Oof. points, 9 assists, 6 rebounds. Oof. And then we look at the last game. They lost. He played seven minutes, went one of five, one of four, and O of O from the three. Nine. So a three lot points. of a lot of chucking. It yeah. feels like a lot of just shots. Here's what it feels like. It feels like Carmelo Anthony with the Knicks. A lot of the ball stopping at him. A lot of pass, pass, shoot. Whereas he's still distributing the ball. That is right. You're mm. there's there's still assists being had there. But it's not an efficient clip of how much he's putting the ball up to making it, is so, it? So, exactly. So if you look at it from Coach Vassell's side, you got a guy who's historically a phenomenal player, a phenomenal shooter. You're expecting great things. He's struggling. Um, I don't know if I necessarily sit Ryan Anderson for a game because he does so much more than just shoot. There, well, there might be more to it. It might yeah. be bigger than basketball. Um, maybe. <laughs> uh, you like that one, don't you? I do. Um, so this kind of was just the latest thing in the list of drama for the London Lightning. Um, it it seems should be called like... the London Drama. <laughs> you like that, don't you? The Drama Club. Or the Queens. The Drama Queens. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, I'm I, in trouble. honestly, I, we're going to probably get in trouble for this, but I think they're the Golden State Warriors. They're so good, but just every call, they complain. And uh, I agree. Of, the London, However, with the, the Golden State Warriors, there's not a lot of off-court, or like, there's not a lot of social media drama, except for like the whole Kevin Durant burner Twitters kind of thing. But I don't think there's a lot of speaking out in social media the way that this London Lightning team does. They're definitely able to voice their opinion, and they don't hesitate about it. And that's one thing. That's I've true. Noticed. And you know what? At the right same time, time, as a player, we don't have our player to talk. But um, would you? Because we we talked about this earlier with early in the season with Elvin, and then on the discussion of. Um, Serge Langus going to the media, talking about, calling out his, not specific players, but calling out his team. Uh, yeah, you can only do that a certain amount of times. After yeah. a while, you're just going to, because when you're approaching these guys, you got to look at it like a job, right? <clears throat> Here's the way I look at it. You can go in your job and you can complain. Let's say you're in a department that you don't like. Mm -hmm. Been there, done that. Start complaining. Start saying things you don't like about it. And you start saying, well, I don't yeah. like it here and I want to go somewhere else. Two things, two scenarios. A, when you talk crap about your boss or someone higher up about your coach, mm -hmm. as an example, when you walk down the hall, because you're going to have moments where it's just you and him, mm -hmm. you're going to have your small little interactions. How's that going to feel? You're going like, mm -hmm. to have that real little weird <laughs> awkward feeling. Who's going to get treated like crap more at work? Yeah. Who's going to have to do all the grunt work and quote unquote biatch work when there's <laughs> crap work to be done? Yeah. It's going to be more between you and the other guy, and it's probably going to be you most of the time. Second off... That's the scenario there. So you, you mm. piss him off, and it's going to be weird. So you know the, the relationship's already skewed there. Yeah. And the other thing is this. Who's to say that Serge Langis doesn't get a job somewhere else, and these guys don't get a job somewhere else? They're only going to play for the Titans now for the rest of their careers? Yeah. Serge Langis might not get a coaching job somewhere else. Someone might not take a chance on no, him. No, I, I don't think at the end of the day. But I don't know, right? Yeah. A lot of things, I think, that need to be... Take into consideration, but what can you do? Yeah. I mean, these guys, they're very vocal, and there's nothing mm -hmm. you can do about it. I don't know how else you'd contain it. I personally would just like to hope that they would be like LeBron James in a sense that they would just go, you know what, it's the playoffs. Let's just delete the social media for now because yeah. this is when the fans start Well, a couple wild. of the tweets have, deleted, <laughs> have gone missing. <laughs> well, and what do, you, what do you mean tweets, Jake? Well, um, as a lot of fans already know, um, and it got circulated around on social media, um, some retweets, uh, posts, uh, screenshots, and such. Uh, we mentioned this earlier. Uh, Mo Bolden came out and said, uh, "Why is the best shooter in league history sitting 
playing only, playing playing only seven, seven minutes. minutes. Yep. He has a great point. Um, but I don't necessarily know if social media is the way to voice that. I know. In just one sec. Carter Peckett, we saying fella. Giving you the big old <laughs> shout out. What do you think of this jersey? It's a Indiana Pacers Reggie Miller. I know it's, a, it's a knockoff. I'll admit it. But anyways, <laughs> I know I had to. Back to the topic at hand. I think the proper way to approach it would have been to, which we don't know if it's already happened or not, but mm-hmm. sitting down with Keith Vassell and Vito and saying, which I get Mo Bolden's frustrated, but if I'm Ryan Anderson, I personally would go, look, man, I appreciate you speaking on my behalf, but I can... Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm I 27. Think... I don't know how old Ryan Anderson is, <laughs> but I would go, I'm 27. I can, I can go talk yeah. to him. I can be a big boy. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. But... Let me go sit down and talk with them. You didn't need to yeah. go to social media. For and you know what? they got to stop doing that. Yeah, and I think you, the London Lightning and Ryan Anderson, they'll figure it out. They will. I really hope so because, look, if Ryan Anderson and Royce White keep talking like this and talk their way out of playing with them, those are two great talents that are going to be up for grabs. Mm-hmm. Not saying that you have to bend over backwards for these guys, but at the same time, like I just said, sitting down and having a mm-hmm. one-on-one discussion and just going, what's going on? Yeah. Because Ryan Anderson too is a guy that's played with two other teams. Played for the Express. He, he yeah, won a cha- Ottawa, yeah. yeah, he won a championship with um, Windsor, and then he yep. brought his talents to London. So I'm not saying he's a guy who hops around. He's not disloyal. That's not Ryan Anderson at all. I'm no, just these saying guys are out there he's get- he's got his championships. He might just go somewhere where the paycheck might be bigger. That's the thing. He's won. He's um, got the resume. Yeah. At the end of the day, winning. Uh, well, in leagues like this, you want to win as much as possible. Yep. So if he stays with London Lightning. It'll work out. Ryan Anderson is a phenomenal talent. He's able to come off the bench and take do that. That's a hard one to swallow. Yeah, no, you can plug him in anywhere. Two one of two ways, especially as a younger gentleman under the age of thirty. Yeah, still trying to look for a big contract. Still, still trying to you know go in out and get a big deal. Maybe, and I appreciate the way he's doing it because, like I just said. He's six all time in scoring. Exactly. He's one of the best shooters yeah. of all time, and you're asking him to come off the bench for Kirk Williams Jr. and Doug Heron Jr. to be your starting point guard and shooting mm-hmm. guard. So, and you're like, okay, well, I guess. And it, I don't know. It's just that's that's not me dealing with it because I don't know yeah. how I would. I personally would be a little bit more bitter. Yeah. But anyways, um, twenty minutes we've been doing this. We got to get this going more. So we have a sweep. Uh, <laughs> yes, we do. I thought this was going to be. I called an upset here. I said yeah. the Riptide were going to win. I was wrong. Ugh, son of a gun. The Riptide have won the series 3 0, and they will face the winner of the whoa, Storm whoa, versus whoa, whoa. Hurricanes. Wrong St. John's. The, the Edge won 3 0. Oh, sorry, the Edge. My bad. Because <laughs> the. Because they're playing. The Riptide are playing sorry, Moncton yeah. tonight to avoid a sweep. sweep. That's yeah. it. My bad. The Moncton Magic are up 2 0. My yeah. mistake. My mistake. Um. But oh, I'm sorry, I jumped too far into the script. That's why I messed oh. you up there. Sorry, because you have the you have us talking about the Riptide Magic right away. Off the bat, yeah, I thought they would, I thought they did win. Anyways, yeah, I thought there was a sweep. There was the St. John Edge swept Windsor. Oh, the Riptide, they won a game or no, the final game. No, tonight. it's final two nothing. Tonight. So the final, well, potentially final game tonight. It's too many St. John's teams. I'm getting all <laughs> fuffled. But anyways, um, the Riptide have fought hard, but they've been tight games. 99 to 90, uh, yeah. 82 to 77. Well, the first game was double overtime. Are we talking about the edge still? We're talking about the Riptide. The oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're talk- we're, we went back to Monday night because okay, Monday night, Sunday yep. was the last podcast. Nope, you're right. But anyway, still hard fought games, you know, 99 to 90, 82 to 77. Just battles defensively. Mm-hmm. My favorite games to watch, actually. The, the high scoring games were cool. Don't get me wrong, but I'm a, I'm a defense guy. I like. Yeah, Moncton seems to be a like lot, in a lot of slow, uh, low scoring games. And that's the thing. I like a slow paced game. I like a, I like to take the right shot. I mm-hmm. like the pass, pass, pass. I like the Spurs. Yeah. Anywho, Malcolm Miller, he's, he's keeping these Riptide alive. Mm-hmm. You and, love Malcolm Miller. Yeah, I can see him being a second team All NBL. He's earned it. He's worked yeah. his way into it. Uh, at the beginning of the year, he was Gabe Freeman's backup. I think. I think at his position, small forward. Um, There's a lot of talent. Yeah, I think. Who would I take first team small forward? Or kind of Is that it wing. Hinkle, Buka, no, yeah, it'd probably be Hinkle and Hinkle, and. Uh, Is it Williamson English. or English? Yeah, Hinkle English. English. They're kind of my two three 
So yeah, I can Herring see him making be my starting guard or my first. Doug Herring. Guard. Oh yeah, I can definitely see Malcolm Miller making second or third team All NBL. He's been a great talent this year, and especially even before Gabe Freeman was gone, he put up some solid numbers. And then after good. Gabe Freeman left, uh, him and Nelson Taroba and Horace Wormley kept his team right on the yeah, right in the playoffs. Right in perfectly. Yeah. It was like a like a glove. He had 18 points on Monday night. Two rebounds, two steals. He had a block. He was 6 of 9 from the floor as well, so that was a pretty good night for him yeah, shooting. Definitely. And 2 of 4 from deep in 35 minutes, so he was heavily used. Oh, Jake, you need a coffee. <laughs> good. <laughs> for Terry Thomas, he led the way. See, I thought it was a closeout. That's how, I, that's how much I got confused when I was writing the script. I'm an idiot. Anyways, Terry Thomas led the way. He had 22 points, three rebounds, two assists, Three steals, and he was 8 of 17 from the floor, and he was 3 of 5 from deep in 34 minutes. That's a good game. Jake's like, look at the memories. It's a real good game. He's looking at the memories. It's a real good game. Anywho, what happened Tuesday night with the River Lions and the Lightning, Jacob? Well, they avoided the sweep. It was a good game. Well, they yeah. did. Uh, first game at home this year. They well not this year. First playoffs. game at home in the playoffs. They beat the London Lightning 124 115. I liked this game. It was a good um, fast game. Uh, I watched, or I was following. I was following the live tweets from the the River Lions Twitter, and I thought it was going to be a lot like the game before, where it was tied, or they had a four point lead to, at halftime, and then they would go and let, let London back into the game and the score quarter, Oof. score eighty points in the second half. But nope, they held on. Uh, Chris Joseph had a great game. Payne Bucard had a great game as well, um, and they got the win. They avoided the sweep. Uh, they did what they need to do at home. Payan Bucard, like I said, had a good game. He had 25 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists. And then on the def- defensive end, he had 3 steals and 2 blocks. He had a well-rounded game. A very good game. He had a very well-rounded game in the 124-115 win, didn't they, Jacob? He did, and he shot it pretty well, too. He went 10 to 17 from the floor, 38 minutes. So it's, that's a great no game. No threes, for, I saw. No. Did I miss that? And I don't think he shot any threes, no. Yeah, he, he's, he, you know what? I've been saying this. He's like Garrett Williamson 2.0. He's a slasher, mid-range guy, great talent, Canadian. Take uh, smart shots. So there shots. you go. Yeah. Um, and then with the Lightning, of course, Royce White led them again. 25 points, 18 rebounds, big game. Four assists, a steal, and a block to go on 9-21 shooting. Not his best shooting performance, but he still put up the numbers to keep the London Lightning in it. Well, put they them were in a position kind of... To sweep, so. I think his, fa- his finger on his right hand. Or yeah, he's been playing a left more. a lot lately, and he played that one game all left, hashtag all left. Um, uh, right. And still, I think he dropped 30 points with his left hand, so that's, that's pretty amazing. It was the island storm game, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think his shooting stats are a little askew. He is shooting 15% yeah. on the three-point line this year, behind the three-point line this year. Yeah, and I think it's not a matter of him just taking bad shots. I think it's just that's not he his game. Not shoot a lot of I think a lot of his a lot of them might just come late in the, the shot clock. The shot clock. So he because he, he's he's a ball dominant player in the sense where you're going to put the ball in his hand or Doug Herring's hands, but a lot of the time it's in he's his hand to make a play. And go. Because if you have your he's six foot eight, which is a little short for a cent a traditional center. But um, he's got in, good in this league, it's perfect. So yeah, at six fast. foot eight, you hold him out at the end, and then you got your Derek Halls, your your Ryan Ryan Reeds. Uh, Ryan yeah, Reeds. he's a power forward center. Yeah, yeah you kind of got like the league's bigger guys have to kind of step out, and that leaves the lanes wide open. So Royce White's a great passer, has great vision, so he can find those cutting lanes. And I think sometimes the lanes get clogged off; they back off him a little bit, and. He'll have to put a shot up at the, at the buzzer. And that's just not his game. He's not a horrible shooter, obviously. I've seen him. No, some... but that would be something interesting to look into is to see the quality of the three-point yeah. shots. Because you're right. If it is like, oh, he's the ball, swing, 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 three. Yeah. Could you imagine Royce White with Ryan Anderson shooting, though? Well, he'd be in the NBA. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because then all I'd have to do is just get over half and just do like a big high step, like the, like an old dad at the YM team. And then, yeah. doop, and then whatever the guy does, if the guy doesn't do anything, he just shoots it. If the guy tries to come up, it goes. It'd be nuts. Yeah. That would be very good, actually. I think that actually would be the one thing holding him back because he's got the vision, he's got the court vision. I don't think it. Well, at six foot eight, it might hold him back a little bit. Well, no, because if he had the shot, he could oh, play if he small had the shot. forward. Oh, right? for sure. Because yeah, yeah. then he has the he has the ball handling ability to and be a small forward. And he's definitely mobile too for his size. He's mobile he's enough. Very yeah. Very strong. I I could see him as like a stretch four, like a a small stretch four. True. Yeah. yeah. Well, Terrence um, Jones for the Pelicans slash Bucks last year. He's six nine. Yeah. No, I could see something like that. Or Quincy Acey, for instance, like six seven on oh, a yeah, good day. Yeah, he had like what he he had like six threes the other night. 
He had a big name. I was a fan of him. Yeah, because he's a Raptor, that's why. That, and I was always <laughs> a fan of his, his work ethic. The his Raptors, motor, yeah. yeah, well, I lived in the country growing up, so I watched a lot of his development. Remember uh, Joey Dorsey? Oh, yeah, Joey Dorsey. Joey Dorsey, Sonny Weems, and Quincy oh, yeah, Hayes on the team. Summer League team. The summer, what was the Summer League team called again? The Young Ones. Oh, yeah. That was nice. I remember that. Even though Sonny Weems, or Sonny Weems was like 27, you're like, yeah. I'm 27. I don't feel that young And anymore. Sonny Weems played a season with the Suns three years ago, four years ago, something like so, that. Yeah, around then. But anyways, um... They just showed his development, and I thought he was going to be a small forward. I thought he was going to turn into... Which he kind of is now, taking a little bit longer. I thought he was going to be a solid, productive uh, four three guy. I thought he was going to be not, Yeah, I thought yeah. he was going to be better than Patrick Patterson in that. And I think thought they should have kept him instead of Patrick Patterson. Actually, yeah, Patrick Patterson's only six foot eight. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So I can see Royce White with a three point being like a, Pat- a better Patrick Patterson. Because Patrick Patterson just pick and pop, just yeah. hit it. Shoot because it. Patrick Patterson doesn't really have Can't that put it on the floor, really. Yeah, like Royce White can get that go and get that rebound and then just run down the court with it. So. And and I, he's like a he'd be a better James Johnson, really. Actually, yeah, that's actually a really good. I'm comparison. a huge fan of James Johnson. He's like my Raptor team would look as such. Actually, Quincy AC yeah. would be on my bench, and James Johnson would have been my small forward with mm-hmm. Rajon Rondo as my. I think Royce guard. White and no, and when I say poor man's, I don't mean any disrespect. I think he's like a poor man's LeBron almost. To be honest, yeah, not a bad. Actually, team. you know what? I think he's a better Boris Diaw. Uh, there you go. Because you think it's Boris Diaw, six foot eight. That being said, Boris Diaw has never been in good shape. Royce White's in phenomenal shape, but Boris yeah, Diaw was at was. six seven, six foot eight, phenomenal passer for his size. Good ball handling skills. Good rebounder, just like yeah, Boris good Diaw as well too. So I can see you can put the ball in his yeah. hands, and Boris Diaw can run a. Uh, so I think yeah, Royce right White's like a better Boris Diaw. I think that's not a bad actually comparison yeah. at all. I like I like that. Um, He's like a Boris Diaw. LeBron had a baby. And it would be Royce White. Was it, it was LeBron James' BMI, not Boris Diaz's BMI. Yeah, he definitely got LeBron closer get to LeBron's jeans, body. Take those jeans over. So anyways, Jake, we're going to get to your sweep. There we go. Here it is. Sweep, 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 sweep. We should have brought some brooms on for this. Sweep. sweep. Actually, you know what? Because there might be a sweep in the Magic, and there might be a sweep in the... Oh, I guess actually the, that's the only sweep available now. So Sunday, if there's a sweep between the Sunday, Magic and Sunday, the Riptide Sunday. tonight, we'll bring a I'll bring a broom on for Sunday's oh, podcast. Oh, jeepers, creepers, <laughs> sweep. Second off, Cody Slansiak. How you doing, fellow? Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Um, oh, Jake, again with the yawning. Sorry, like, how was that early with you? my daughter? I know. I, <laughs> my cats were fighting, too, actually. It was kind of annoying. Anyway, so the Edge got their sweep. This was a tight series, too. Well, I this thought was this another game, close uh, game. Yeah, we both said we thought this was going to go five games. Oh, I thought they were yeah, going to get one. Five. I yeah. thought they were going to get this one for sure. And game one could have easily... This is the thing. This These games could have easily been 2-1 Windsor. Yeah. Because it, like look at last night's game, 124-117. A lot of times... It went, That's even a two-possession game, pretty much. Well, not even that. That's a lot closer game than you think, because I imagine a lot of those were foul... Like you have to foul at the end of the game, yep. so it kind of inflates the score. When really, an eight point or what was this? A seven point loss really should have been probably like a three point loss. Yeah, it sucks. And that also, these are the type of games I'm sure you start thinking. Look, a three point made here, mm-hmm. some free throws made free there. Throws, yeah. Especially when it goes to double overtime, you think, oh, if I would have hit uh, one more yeah. free throw in regulation, we wouldn't be tied. That's the other thing. The double overtime game. That's where if I'm the Windsor Express, that's where if there's a way to that you could like put a little asterisk beside the sweep and just be like, you know what, this is a sweep, but it should have been like you, know, you guys played <laughs> yeah. very well. It wasn't just like a one sided no, affair. It, de- it definitely wasn't. I was hoping they would have got the game at home. It's unfortunate. Can't get it. Can't battle them all out. Maurice Jones though, he did. He played every minute of the final game. He did. Good for him. He said, I get it. if I'm gonna lose, I gotta at least I gotta be out there and just play every last second. He had 37 points. Two rebounds, six assists, five steals, and he was 12 of 16 from the floor with three or five shooting from deep in 48 minutes. Who led the way for the edge, Jake? Charles Hinkle. Hinkle hoops. Solid. He had 24 points, going around with five, five rebounds, two assists. He was 10 of 7 from the field. Uh, and he actually shot three or five from deep in 31 minutes. So efficient game, 24 points in 31 minutes is very nice. Seven of 10 shooting. I like that a lot. That too, yeah. 
No misses. Just all straight good buckets. Do you think he... Here's the thing with the awards. I have no issue with um, Frank Session winning Newcomer of the Year because phenomenal. But So Hinkle didn't win any award, did he? No, he didn't. That's the thing, too, because it kind of threw things off with Frank Session not being a rookie and no no disrespect to Jalen Tate, but I think if Frank Session was a rookie, he'd win it. And then that would leave it kind of open for Devon Maxwell or Hinkle to win Newcomer. But Hinkle got the... Well, there's nothing against players winning two awards, obviously, because... No, and the Canadian of the Year, that could have went to Terry Thomas, but that's rather here nor yeah, there. I think it's different. I think now, I think if the league didn't go to the ballot formats, I don't think Carl English would have won two awards. Meaning? Meaning I think the league... Would have just given it to Terry Thomas, probably. I think I don't think like the, the people. I think the people who voted voted accordingly, and the I'm best a conspiracy Canadian theorist, theorist, Jacob. Yeah. CBC no, I'm not doing a documentary for a reason. Oh, he yeah, needs hardware. I, I was saying to a few other players, I was texting him. I said, I said, don't be surprised, man. He's gonna get some hardware. Yeah. They're not no, giving no. the CBC is not our biggest broadcasting station in Canada is not gonna do a documentary on the second best Canadian behind Steve Nash, according yeah. to that everyone else, a documentary and just go, yeah, he had a great solid season. Yeah. He was a, he was a. He was good. He was on the ballot for some awards, but he didn't. It get was any. good. Yeah, yeah, that's really gonna sell. Yeah, but I think, I think the coaches got it right in their voting. I don't know exactly how many coaches. No, voted, no but, argument there. Yeah. Just that's just me being a bit of a dick, and also <laughs> me thinking outside the box a little. In mm-hmm. that, it's fine giving them the awards. That's who I would have gave it to as well. I, I would have gave the MVP to Carl English, and I would have gave newcomer the Canadian of the Year. Mm-hmm. Sorry to uh, Terry Thomas, but. They decided what they wanted to decide. Because this opened up the conversation, too, and I saw Morris Del Costa tweet this. Um, the argument was made, I believe, by a Lightning player that, well, if Carl English won those two awards, how come Royce White didn't win MVP, newcomer, and rookie last year? Because it wasn't his rookie contract. Because, yeah, he wasn't a rookie. A, That's newcomer, the answer. he could have won. He very newcomer, well could have yeah, no, He could have. Um, and you know what? If it was coach's ballot, coach's ballot for newcomer, he probably would have won it. I think so. Um, but however, newcomer of the year was Jai Carson, and I love Jai Carson, so I'm not going to want to take that away from him. So where is he now? Uh, I don't actually know. I can look that up before the end of the show, but it's not around. No, oh, no, no. He was a phenomenal piece for the Island Storm team last year. Um, a team that kind of underperformed. Oh, another Island Storm player who didn't stick around. <laughs> well, no, he stuck around through the season. They just didn't come back. He was protected, but he he got a, probably a better contract after the amazing year he had. Because that on Storm team kind of underperformed during the season, and then um, I had them losing. Uh, I had them being sweeped in the first round to St. John. They beat St. John, and then they, I believe, they took the Halifax Hurricanes in like six or seven games. Yeah, and that was a team that like squeaked into the playoffs too. True. Well, the series is still tied 1-1 for the Hurricanes and the Storm. Actually, I have Storm. a computer in front of me. I can just leave it up. They have game three tonight. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a big night. The Hurricanes versus the Island Storm is going to be at the East Link Center, East Link Center at 6 p.m. That will be a good game. I always, I'm a big fan of the, the arena and the atmosphere at the East Link Center there. And the final game could be Saturday as well. We're gonna, I'm going to be watching it because I have Saturday off finally. Oh, it's all right. It's 6 p.m. Jai Carson plays in the Greek Basket League with Korov- Korovos. Good luck. I'm yeah. glad you pronounced that one. Good uh, for him. Yeah. What's the pay scale like there? I don't know. I'll look it up. That's why I like you, Jake. Anyways, that's pretty much the only games we got going here on forward besides the Magic and the Riptide. So the Magic and the Riptide win tonight. The Magic win tonight. The only games left until next week will be the game Saturday. I was looking it up. Yeah, because uh, everyone else is done pretty much. Yep. So, well, London plays. When does London play? Friday. Good. Yeah, London can close out Niagara on Friday. The league will actually have to fix their website. They've got. I know. Windsor. I, keep, I know. They keep putting. I was ready to type those up when I was doing the script. I'm like, wait. I thought it was best of five. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you know who's number one in the uh, Eastern Conference, Jake? The baby dinosaurs. <laughs> 
All right, you settle down. They're the Raptors. We're playing the Wizards. I'm saying we win in five. We're probably not going to win game one. I don't know why, but that's just how I think it's going to be. We're terrible in game ones, but actually, I take that back. I'm glad I have a microphone and recording. I am saying we're going to win game one finally, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. I say the Raptors are going to win. We're going to win it in five games, though. I think Washington might squeak one from us. I don't know. Or it's going to be a sweep. Either way, it's a gentleman's sweep. I gotta try. I gotta leave my arm down. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think the Washington Wizards can take this. I don't think they just rolled over, but I don't think in the end of the day, I don't think there are a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of turmoil mm-hmm. with John Wall, Marcin Cortot not getting along. It kind of reminds me of the London Lightning right now, where the yeah. River Lions. It seems as though with Sam Muldrow leaving, they've come together, and they've been more of a team just from one game. Mm-hmm. So there's that's why I'm very interested to see the game tomorrow for the River Lions and the Lightning at the Meridian Center at 7 p.m. You know, you know, think about it. Yeah, no, what it'll be they, good. What if, um, they, what if they come back, dude? Could you imagine? That'd be pretty neat. Wouldn't <laughs> yeah. it? That'd be pretty neat. That would be very neat. Um, that being said, if they're if the if it's time to strike, that's what I would be. If, I can't think of the coach's name in Niagara now. Oh, and I know it. Once you say it, Serge, no. It's not Serge Lang. It just said it. Niagara uh, Joe Rasso. Uh, Joe Rasso. I always, uh, I knew it. I was going to get there and figure it out, but anyways. So Joe Rasso, if I'm him, I am feeding the River Lions. Look, look at this turmoil these guys are going through. We need to stay unified. We need to keep playing team basketball. These guys are ready for a fight. These guys are ready for internal, internal turmoil. Also, the 10-year veteran from the G League, Andre Ingram. Yeah, great story. Good for him. Great story. That was cool. That dude, when I saw him, I was like, wait a second. Is this dude, I'm not going to lie, I thought it was a 40, I thought it was like a long-time season ticket holder. And they're like, this is how bad (laughs) our season's going. We're just going to have you meet Magic Johnson. (laughs) Shake his hand. It's it's been that. Um, No, he had a great, great year. He's a solid player, man. Oh, sorry, great game. Yeah, he's a he's a very good D League player. His career for from the three point line is like forty eight percent. Yeah, and I think he's hit in ten years seven hundred and like eighty three. I think the number is threes. Very impressive. Jesus, yeah. Um, get, and there's like what forty G League games. So yeah, until yeah, yeah. That's the other thing until, people need to understand too. Until uh, until he signed up tonight, man, he should have got him in the NBA. <laughs> he was actually, and I read this afterwards, or I watched a video. He was a math tutor on the side, besides a professional basketball player with the G League. He tutors students in math. He lives in Los Angeles. You think he could live off the top salary from the G League? No way. No, barely. Seventy-five thousand dollars a year is a very nice salary, U.S. dollars, but that's probably why he has to tutor on the side. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's like the. WNBA, they all have to go play pro overseas. Uh, yeah, the w, when they come play at home, it's basically just to be at home. Uh, who was it? Cheryl Cheryl Parker? She doesn't even play anymore. She's retired. Or she's an analyst. I know for sure. I don't even know if she's playing in the WNBA anymore. Who? Cheryl Parker. Cheryl Parker. Anthony Parker's sister. Candace Parker. Candace Parker. Cheryl. Oh, she played last season. Is she still playing? Or she's yeah, yeah, she okay, good. Be, because I know she missed a season. With her baby. Yeah, which is... <laughs> Sheldon Williams? Or I make this joke. Are they still married? Yeah, I think so. I make Good this joke. for him. I know. Wow. Yeah. You're just kind of an eh basketball player. And your that guy had a weird forehead, MVP. man. That forehead was like, <laughs> what? Um, I lost what I was going to say. Sorry. I oh, yeah, no, sorry. I've seen a meme. Oh, no. It reminds me. Isn't it nothing sexist? Don't worry. No, no, no. Um, and it says, because <laughs> it's like... DNP injury, like ACL tear in the NBA. And somebody's like, oh, damn, the WNBA out here, like, pregnancies are like ACL tears. You shut down for the whole season. <laughs> Why can't she play? She's pregnant. Oh, nice. That makes sense. Oh, That's like a female exclusive. Why you can't play? She's on her period. Oh, I'm not touching that one. Okay. <laughs> you remember when Bill Ambeer coached the Detroit Shock? Yes. I remember they I gave that remember. a lot of press, actually. Yeah. That was interesting. I actually love watching the WNBA. Really? Yeah. No, uh, Diana Taurasi is amazing. I used to watch it a lot, actually. I used to... 
I can name every WNBA franchise. I remember I got into a big drunken argument with my one friend <laughs> Jeff. We were trying to talk about who uh, who could, who knows more about basketball. And I was like, I know more about basketball because I can name every WNBA franchise: the Chicago Sky, the New York Liberty, San Antonio Silver Stars, the Atlanta Dream, the Los Angeles Sparks. Um, Minnesota Lynx, Seattle, Sacramento Monarchs. Are they around? I just remember the Monarchs. Oh, yeah, start over? Okay, Chicago Sky. Yes. Atlanta Dream. Uh, yes. New York Liberty. New York Liberty, yep. San Antonio Silver Stars. Nope. They're not around anymore? They moved. That still counts. I guess. Hey, deal with it. I haven't <laughs> watched it in a while. I'm not... I think the Sacramento Monarchs are they still a team? Mm, no, so, I think the Silver Stars moved to Las Vegas. No way! They because there's a team Vegas. now. It's the Las Vegas Aces, and I think that's who. Oh. I think it was the San Antonio team. Because there's a Dallas team, the Dallas Wings. They're fairly oh. new. So it's the Atlanta Dream, the Chicago Sky, the Connecticut Sun, the Atlanta Dallas Sun. Wings, Indiana Fever. Fever. Las Vegas Aces, New York Liberty, yep. Minnesota Lynx, Los Angeles Sparks, Phoenix Mercury, Seattle Storm, and Washington Mystics. We're in the Chicago Sky. They're not there anymore? Yeah. Oh. The second team, I said. Oh, sorry. Um, however, so, you know what I like about the WNBA, though? It's not like the NCAA where it's like the lady team. It's like the Tennessee Vols and the Tennessee Lady Vols. Oh, the Lady Devils. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what? It's like, why aren't they just the Duke Blue Devils? They're the devils. That's what yeah, they are. The Blue Devils, too. Well, it's not the Atlanta Lady Dreams. <laughs> they have Lady Dreams. They're different. The Atlanta Dream. The New York Lady Liberty. I don't mind some of their their names. Like the New York I Liberty. I thought that was a good name. That's a great name. Actually. Um, um, the LA Sparks. I don't really understand the Connecticut Sun. That's just me, though. I think that's a bit of a... I think it's a joke, really. I, I understand. Get, like, get the joke thing. There's yeah. so much sun here in Connecticut. It's gray six months of the goddamn year. <laughs> what? But I love the Seattle Storm, though. They're low That's sick. it, the Storm. Yeah. yeah, the Seattle Storm, like, that's what I mean. They got some pretty good Phoenix names. Mercury. The Mercury's pretty good because of the sun. Get it? Yeah. The temperature, yeah. thermostat. However, I don't really like their logo. It kind of looks like it came from, like, a t-shirt company. You know, those, you just go to the, it's like you want to add generic a. Generic ones. Are yeah, do you want to add a symbol to your your t-shirt and you just look at the generic ones based on uh, whatever. Well, that These is. are 50 <laughs> templates. Go nuts. <laughs> yeah. So MVP mm-hmm. for Westbrook for Westbrook. Wow, that was tough. He is the only player to ever average a back to back triple double. He had twenty last yeah. night. Here this is the crazy thing. This is why I'm not a fan of like M- who votes for MVP? The media has a vote. Yeah. The coaches I have think, a vote. I think MVP voters and even fans are kinda they're so flip floppy. Because last year, it's oh you gotta give Res- West. It had to go to you have to give though. Westbrook the MVP because of the triple doubles. And now this year, triple doubles, nobody's saying oh it's James Harden or LeBron. That's what it's down to. So this, why one year is it? Well, he's also yeah. Actually, if you look at it though, um, I think was this Colin Cowherd was saying that the, yeah Colin Cowherd was saying that the Thunder won the exact same amount of games last season, and now they have a Hall of Famer. One of the best wing players in the league and the best, second best point guard. Yes, but that also means they need time. These guys yeah, were. No, no. They're I think built I for think the they're playoffs. For the playoffs. They don't yeah. want, and I don't like using that term because the only team you can really say that to, for is the Spurs. Those were the only teams that were actually built for the playoffs. But this team is because you can see that Carmelo Anthony was is holding back a little. Mm-hmm. I'm a I'm a big Carmelo Anthony fan. So it kind of it bothers me when people are on him all the time. But I want I, him to be good. I want yeah, him. I know. I see. I, like, I want him to be that 2008 Western Conference Carmelo Anthony again. Where Obviously, he he's Kobe older. Bryant, but yeah. like, I watched that game, and people always knocked on his defense and stuff like that. But that I watched good. that series, and he was phenomenal. He was all over the place. He was yep. rebounding. He was defending. Like Kobe gave it to him, obviously, because it's Kobe. But like that's when Kobe was like. It didn't matter. You couldn't yeah. stop him. <laughs> Even Tony Allen looked like a fool. I think that was like a year after he averaged 35 points per game. That's Yeah, exactly. Which is nuts. Exactly. That's when you and you start factoring it all in. That was like the – like to me, everybody thinks like 
because I'm I'm not of the generation where I got to watch Jordan or Magic or Larry and and the nineties and watch the bad boys Jordan. and stuff like that. I watched more Michael Jordan with the Wizards than yeah. I did with but the But like Bulls. to me, prime NBA was like oh six to oh ten, not oh ten, but two thousand six to two thousand ten. Mainly because Phoenix Suns was pretty dominant, but but that it's was like, you the, know it's kind of a weird correlation, you know. Steve Nash yeah. went back back MVP. <laughs> yeah. Mark Dottomar and Hitler, I think, the like even then that was like to me that was prime basketball because you had Tracy McGrady dominating still. You had not Le, bad. You yeah, had it's LeBron, not bad times. You had Carmelo Anthony. You had Kobe. I think Tim year, Duncan, Kevin Tim Garnett, Duncan, all Paul in their Pierce, like Ray all Allen, in their prime. Allen Iverson. Yeah. Um. Well, Allen Iverson wasn't necessarily in his prime. Still, still getting but, it done. Yeah. Though. Um. But you, but like to me, I forget where I was going with this. That stretch to me was like that's that's my generation of prime basketball. This now, new salary cap era is very intimidating for me. You know what? I don't like. I think the floor is going to fall out eventually, man. ESPN's yeah. floor, floor is falling out, and that's where most of their money's coming from. Yeah, that's true. I don't like this whole European style for basketball now. Uh, or everybody, no, because... everybody who get like it's okay. There's this one and done, and then and then everybody else who's not a freshman being drafted is a is a seven foot two um, middle Euro- middle European or Western European or whatever a European big white dude who can handle the ball and shoot threes. And now and now you see guys like um, Markinen. No, no. Um, because of guys like Markinen and um, Porzingis. Porzingis and other guys like that, you now see guys like Cousins, Brooke Lopez, Robin. Lo- not Rob. Which which one? Brooke better? Lopez shoots way too many threes. Yeah, bro- you see guys like Brooke Lopez. Um, they should Cousins, shoot as many threes all as having to add three to their game. I just miss. I miss like Shaq style. Back to the basket. Have a seven footer who's thick who. Pounds it in the paint. That's just me, though. That's I miss that. They would, you should have tasked the whole Shaquille O'Neal with the whole running gun, high pace Ferrari yeah, Lakers so or uh, Suns, Suns. Sorry, that was weird. I didn't like. And that. And you had a big diesel truck come Steve in here. Steve Kerr like, was the worst. Wow, I'm not sure. Ryan McDonough is a pretty bad GM right now. Steve Kerr, he was he was good, but he also went by his body of work in that. He was there when Steve Nash won the MVP, so it just That's works out thing, perfectly, yeah. right? Same with Brian Colangelo, um, too. Brian Colangelo worked off his dad's coattails, but he actually has turned himself into a good GM. Yeah. Um, who's he with now? She, yeah, he got me yawning. Um, the Sixers. Okay. He's completing the process. For, right, uh, right, right, right. What's his face? Hinkle? Was it Hinky? Hinky. Sam Hinky. Sam Hinky. Matthew Latour, thank you for joining in. Think Niagara can sneak out. The game four, that crowd is a difference maker. MVP is all about narrative. Last year was seen as rust versus the world. This year, they... That's true. I agree with that. I can agree with that. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to go to your first part first. Matthew. I'm going to call you Matthew now because we're on the professional level, Matthew. <laughs> um, can I I'm really hoping... Oh, Daniel B., thank you for joining. No friend of mine. Um, I think... I want the Riverlines, too. I think... It, Strike while the iron's hot, in my opinion. There's a mm-hmm. chink in the armor, That's true. so push back. London pushed really flipping hard on you guys. Now you guys got to push really hard back, and they fortunately were able to, in a boxing match, they took a bunch of hits, they took a bunch of hits, yeah. but then they finished off around with a couple of bops, bops yeah. back to the fucking head, and then, well, sorry for swearing. But. Morris Doug Costa just said, there seems to be an issue brewing, well, 21 hours ago, there seems to be an issue brewing with the London Lightning, so Niagara needs to take oh, advantage. Oh, keep us stirring and keep <laughs> brewing and poking and prodding, and if I, if I was on the team, I would just go in there, and I would just be the biggest dick and just poke and prod everyone and just be like, hey, Ryan, you're over minute seven, good for you. Yeah, I would well, pay yeah, a fan. Yeah, no. I would pay a fan if a you, chant every minute that he yeah. plays over seven minutes. Eight minutes, eight <laughs> minutes, nine minutes, nine minutes. That's the minutes, thing too, because I, I would think minutes. as a franchise, as a team, and you're going up against a team that is this. What's the word I want to look for? They're not not divided, but if you look at a team where. The, where there's been so many they issues of yeah has, has issues have come up like this where guys are in the media guys are in social media they're complaining about playtime they're complaining I've about never seen this in this league yet yeah I don't I don't think so um, it's not not I don't know I can't as the River Lions I take advantage of that you get in their head you know like 100%. you just beat them 100%. so it, so if you can get out on them 
while the, and get them flustered because they're already flustered off the court. But if you can flush them on the court, I think they have a very it's good chance there. Yeah, they're already of taking looking another for home it. game. I don't know if they can go back and win in London. And I'm take telling them. you, River Lions fans, you want to get under his head. Every minute he <laughs> plays over seven minutes. Now I'm going to be a dick. Every minute he – look at Jake laughing. Every minute he plays over seven minutes, I would be chanting – Eight minutes, eight minutes, eight minutes. <laughs> Unless he drops fifty on you, then you got to shut up. And then, yeah, if he drops fifty, if he hits like four threes in a row while you're screaming that at him, then you got to shut the hell up. But otherwise, <laughs> if it keeps, get, I would yell that so loud. And then when he gets off, I would just keep yelling, eight minutes, eight minutes, eight <laughs> minutes. But anyways, I'm a big dick that way. And anyways, Matthew, your second part. It was Russell Westbrook versus the the world last year. I am having a hard time with Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook versus the world last year. That's what it was. He was a very good narrative because Oscar Robertson was the last guy to do it. Oscar Robertson, holy crap, 1971-72, holy crap, holy crap. And anyone, second off, I'm. this is how my opinion is. If anyone wants to go out there and say he is getting stats padded, I want them to go out there in their men's league, in a rec league. Mm-hmm. I want them to go get me some footage of them getting a double-double. And as well, I want them to play 10 games and then see if they can average a triple-double. And then the last game, I'm going to go to him and say, hey, all you need to do is get uh, 15 more rebounds and then you can get a triple-double. Are you just going to go... And I know using your men's league, your yeah. YMCA rec league, is, is a, not a really great example. But at the same time, I agree with Russell Westbrook. If, if they came up to me and said, Ethan, you have X amount of rebounds. You've got your assist. You've got your points. Everything else is all figured out. You just need to get 16 rebounds. You know what I'm saying to the guys in the change room? I am getting 16 rebounds. And once I get 16 rebounds, y'all can do whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. <laughs> right? I mean, I don't know. What would you do, Jacob? I think the team is. I think I don't think padding the stats are the right word, but I think his teammates definitely help him get those triple doubles. Yeah, because you see Stephen Adams kind of like give it. up rebounds. He boxed for, up Carmelo yeah. Anthony, sure, yeah. but is that going to happen in the playoffs? No, because that's where Russell Westbrook doesn't care about averaging a triple double in the playoffs. If you go to him in the playoffs and you say, "Hey, it's Game Seven, and you know if you guy if you go out Russell Westbrook in Game Seven and get 15 rebounds, you'll have a triple double in this series," you know he's going to probably say, yeah. "Are we going to win?" Because that's all I care about. Do I need to get 25 <laughs> rebounds to win? Then that's what I'll do. Thanks for the photo, by the way, Matty Latour. Wait. Send me a photo. <laughs> Turn my laptop around for you. Of what? Of, uh, he was telling me this is not a forced rebound. <laughs> oh, you settle down, Matthew, you <laughs> dick. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. Also, Dan B., we are not discussing bowling. Anyways. Um, you're very funny, Matthew. Ha, 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 he, 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 ha. But second off. Still, it's still a triple double. Come on, you got to throw this guy a, a bone here. I know big guys are shooting threes. Everyone's shooting threes, so there's rebounds to be had. And I do agree with Earl Boinkins. I know this is me talking out of both sides of my mouth a little bit here, but I do agree with Earl Boinkins in that the triple double has been a little bit more glorified the past a little bit. But it's still go out and get a triple double. When's the last time any of you guys had a triple double? That's true. Let's not. I'm not trying to be that guy. I'm really not. But at the same time, let's let's reward a guy for his efforts because are we going to look back in five or ten years, twenty years, when we have our kids and say, "Oh, Russell Westbrook, he averaged back to back triple doubles." Are you going to sit there and go, "Well, look at the footage here. You know, he got this rebound where he didn't get it. He should have got this rebound, and he should have got this rebound." And then your kid's going to look at you like, "Does it matter?" And you're like, "No, because he didn't <laughs> average a triple double. Good for him, right?" I don't know. That's the way I look at it. Hmm. It's like Will Chamberlain in his 50-50 years. I, you know, he did it, he did it. And if there's one, if there's an asterisk, sure, put an asterisk. But what can you do, right? Anyways, Jacob. Oh, you every night he gets it on True K. You settle down. You, I am down. Settle down. It's my player must be real sweet. Mine's still only a 65. Jake's like, I still beat him, though, don't you, Jake? I did beat Matthew Latour. He was talking trash on Facebook. I saw that, Matthew. Since, <laughs> since the topic at hand now, what happened, Jake? Oh, Matty was looking at, looking for some people to make cry on Sunday, last Sunday, for playing some 2K in. What were your team selections again? Uh, but, oh, <laughs> what's he saying? Although Jake put me in at my... Ah, uh, he's covering his I, butt. Uh, I love it. I love it. With the lowly Phoenix Suns. Oh, yeah, you did. And he had the Pelicans. Yeah, the Pelicans. 
But he did not. Uh, I'll give him. He did not have Demarcus Cousins. Did you, did you guys do two suicides in a random, or did you? Why did you pick the Pelicans? <laughs> you could have picked any team. AD missed two free throws down by one. Yeah, I had a twelve point lead and I blew it. Anyhow. Well, you had the Suns. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's gonna get blown. <laughs> but you know who got him? Dragon Bender. <laughs> and he's way too good in that game, actually. He is, is, he a is way too good. Oof. Listen, Anthony Davis. Davis. Anthony Davis is supposed to make those for you. Anyways. Yeah. Um, any fan questions wrapping it up, guys? Pelicans are my favorite team. team. Oh, I did not know that. Oh, fair enough. I got a soft spot for the Charlotte Hornets. Me too, actually. I, I don't know why. I do. Even when they were when the, they were the Bobcats. Bobcats <laughs> yep, with, uh, with Steven Jackson, Boris Diaz, Tyson Chandler, actually, and like that team. Uh, Gerald Wallace. I thought they were going to be a great team. I remember I got Gerald Wallace to actually look at me one time when we were sitting like uh, five or ten rows up, ten rows up, sorry, behind the Charlotte Bobcats bench. It was from a basketball game. Uh, basketball. Our team, we fundraised cheese, and I sold the most amount of cheese, and I got four tickets, and they were really good. And then they were going into a timeout, and the Bobcats just were beating the crap out of the Raptors, and I was just so mad. And my brother and I, I remember it now, we actually moved up that game. That was the game my brother asked the usher and was like, hey, man, my dad gave us 20 bucks each and was like, hey, just go hand him 20 bucks each and just ask to move up. And we sat, like, real close. And anyways, I wish that I had Facebook. I would have loved it. Anyways, I yelled at Gerald Wallace. I'm like, hey, Wallace, you look like my sister. And then you look back, and then someone from the team, like a coach or a trainer Mm -hmm. or something, is like, what the hell does your sister look like? (laughs) That's funny. Do you have a sister? No, that was, no? That was, <laughs> I thing? was just mad. I was upset. Yeah. That's fun. That's actually yeah. probably one of my favorite. Uh... And then there's these drunk guys in front of us that were just hammering. Me and my brother, I was like in high school too. I was like in grade 11 or 12, so I never really drank or anything. So these guys in front were just piss hammered, just laughing it up. But anyway, yeah, that was rather here or there. That was my one. I remember my interaction with Gerald Wallace. Yeah, He's not 2K, know. by the way, on the all-time team, and I hate yeah. that. Yeah. Because he didn't want to sign his rights over. Same with Ray Allen. Same with... Um, Who's been in them before, so... I know. Yeah, same with Rasheed he's Wallace. Trying to sell more books. Well, and Rasheed Wallace... Uh, well, rumor has it Rasheed Wallace, Charles Barkley, and all those guys want more money than what the average mm-hmm. guy gets paid for. I don't what know. What do you get paid to be in 2K? Do the G League guys get paid too? I think that's up for... I don't even know, to be honest. I think mm-hmm. if you're a G League guy, I'd be like, you can do it for free. All I don't care. <laughs> yeah, just for me. Um... Right. No, I think it's depending on negotiation, I guess, on how much your name can bring in, right? I think Rasheed Wallace probably yeah, wanted too much money, and they said, no, thank you. And he went, all right, screw you. I don't really care. Actually, speaking of 2K, um, a former NBL Canada player, Tim Parham, one of the all-time greats for rebounding, mm-hmm. he's actually one of the – he's involved in, like, the development of the game. I don't know exactly what his position is, but I think Tim Parham – I want to say is one of the guys they put the ping pongs on and they track his body. I think that's sick. I'll see if I can find what he does. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but no, that would Tim, be like one of the cool jobs. He's actually I in if, in my player. If you watch the and you go to not the fan tweets, but if you go to the league or maybe it is fan tweets, Tim Parham will tweet at you. Yeah, and it's a former NBL guy. See, that's cool. I like because he played. Like that. It's not like he just played a season. He like he played, I think two or. Three seasons with Halifax, and then a year with um, somebody else does. Bilal Ben. Oh, Bilal Ben. Nice. Yeah, he played for Orangeville and then Niagara. Flat. That okay. Here's my question, Matthew. Since you're listening as well, appreciate it. Uh, Jake or Matthew, what would you guys rather be? A practice player for an NBA franchise. So all you do is you, you pretty much just stay at home, or you travel with the team when mm-hmm. you have big stretches and you do your practice stuff. Or would you rather be a motion capture body guy? That's a good question. Because you're probably getting paid about the same. Because yeah. the practice guys, I think I remember looking it up, they get paid around a hundred thousand dollars a year, something like that, hundred hundred fifty thousand. So it's still pretty good. And I'm sure for two K, they pay you very well. And I, you know. I'd probably just go with a practice player. I think it'd be cool. Yeah, because as cool as being the motion capture guy for two K is, at the end of the day, like, think about it. you get all your stuff accommodated. So like in the meantime, what I would do is if you I'm basically a practice player, get paid to sit courtside at a bunch of NBA games because you might also have to be on call. Second yeah. off, what I also would do is um, play in like men's leagues as well. But you'd also get free stuff. So let's say there was a guy from the NBL who played in the summer league last year. He was a 29 year old. He played. He's what he used to be in the NBL. I can't. His last name is Muhammad or something like that. 
and he plays for the Washington Wizards practice team. And basically what he does is he plays in men's leagues when he's not doing anything else and mm. just gets paid to be with them. That's and he sick. has all free gear, all free stuff. Like, it basically be like an emergency goalie in the NHL. Because Tim Parham, too, he I think he played summer league or preseason with them. Um, who was it? The Clippers. The practice player. The body shit would work for motion capture. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Rose assuming you're a, you're a top level physical Motions specialist. wouldn't be very fast. <laughs> same here, same here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's awesome. Um, I can't quite find it. Maybe 2K has a website I can look at. Yeah. But I think I would be the practice player too. I think that would be a sweet little ditty because think about it. I want all the free swag, all the free merchandise. I would love it. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. And then think about it. You don't put your body through too much. You're just a practice player. So you just got to remember sets and just look up different, like, just be a practice body. Yeah. But anyways, um, we're going to wrap this bad boy up. Oh, Ian Bear. Hey, what's going on, fella? Um, we're going to wrap this bad boy up, though, and just get her done. Get her done. I'm sorry. I won't do that again. <laughs> Big thanks to our sponsors, Juan the Barber at the Cherry Home Mall. You can reach him at 519-719-5721. You can also reach my little brother, Seth, now that the weather's nice and build your deck gazebo or, or whatever you need. You can reach him at Perennial Landscaping at 519-532-0076. Hey, get your taxes done, Jacob. I do. I, I do. I get my taxes Go to done. Liberty Taxes at 666 Wonderland Road North. Visit Michael Grimley. He'll help you out. If you mention the show, you're going to get yourself a discount. You can set up an appointment at 519-657-1126. Also, sorry about the background noise. It's just a beautiful day today, and I don't care. I had to have the windows open. Mm -hmm. It's the first beautiful day Lots for us. Lots of construction us. here in London. Well, it's construction. It's not summer. It's construction yeah, now. That's, yeah. It's just that it's, that's how well, that's how Canada works. If there's any American listeners, one minute it's winter, and then it's like, oh, it's it's nice. Start doing the construction. Mm -hmm. If anybody's interested, there's 67 open positions with NBA 2K. For what? You name it, man. Um, I want a job with 2K. Uh, a lot of them are in Novato, California, which is, I think, 30 minutes north of San Francisco. So, great area. So, between two jerseys, is going to be relocating as well as Zilton Media <laughs> to... Um, there's some temperatures. jobs in Kirkland, Washington. WA is Washington, right? That's I the state. So, yeah. um, or Wyoming, Washington. No. Um, Agora Hills, California. Oh, we're going to California or Nevada. Okay. Um, 2K Vegas has a bunch of jobs. For and what? there's a couple jobs, there's one or two jobs in the Czech Republic at Hangar 13 for Jesus Christ. animation outsourcing assistant. I bet that's who does the um, the, war the stuff? European players. Because, you know, there's some EuroLeague teams. Are, did they do that this year? I didn't, yeah, there's I, some Euro I've teams. Only, I've only done my player, so I don't know. Yeah, if you look in the my, there's some teams. Top you Euro Leagues. Yeah. You know what, I think the, the London Lightning need to be there. Oh, Carter Peckert left a question for us up top. He asked uh, how many games the Raptors and Wizards got. Oh, I answered your question then. I said it in five. I said the Raptors are going to win in five. Five games, five games, five Yeah, games. I think five games is fair. Also, go visit Ken Hu at Intercore Health at 57 York Street. There are one of us who helps us give tickets away for the show. Oh, there's marketing jobs. Oh, cool. We should apply for them, see if we can work from here. Um, you can call Ken Hu at Intercore Health. They're going to be moving around and stuff, but follow their Facebook page for all their details. But you can still set up an appointment. They're going to be keeping the same number at 519-432-7247. Sorry for the burp. Anyways, like us on social media. Please share this feed, by the way. Really appreciate it if you would. Like us on social media. Like us on iTunes, Facebook, Twitter. Subscribe on YouTube. Maybe Twitch if you're feeling crazy. User. And that's the show for today, though. Isn't mm -hmm. it, Jake? Go. It Bye. is. The G League's on Twitch. Well, I guess we gotta get on Twitch then, oh wait! <laughs> Alright, everybody have a wonderful day!